Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the SOS-Radio mobile podcast. My name is Jason Knight, your host and president and founder of Chicago Zone Supernatural Current Studies. I'm joined, as always, by my fellow SOSers and brothers in arms, Mr. Dave Black. What's up? SOS co-founder and Claire Sensitive, and Mr. Joe Erie. Oh, no, you didn't. I did. SOS member and Claire Sensitive. I called it the SOS... And fancy, fancy, fancy lad. He is a fancy lad. Oh, thank you. I called it the SOS-Radio Mobile Podcast because we are reporting from our vehicle heading to the Lizzie Borden house. No, in- Lizzie, not Lizzie, Lizzie. Whoa! Did I, did I say... You said Lizzie. I did not, liar. Yes, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're literally in the car doing, you know, about 70 miles an hour headed to... Um, Fall River, Massachusetts, to visit the Lizzie Borden house. Um, hopefully when we get there, we'll be uh, able to interview some of the workers there, get some of the inside scoop. Um, we're still uh, in our Bridgewater, Massachusetts uh, journey, on our Bridgewater, Massachusetts journey, reporting live from the field at some pretty infamous locations. Um, so today we're going to be visiting the Lizzie Borden house. What do you guys know about Lizzie Borden? Um, honestly, I, I didn't actually look too much into it because you know me, I like to be surprised by things. Um, but uh, from what I understand, she she murdered her parents with an axe or something. That's right. Or a hatchet. Correct. Right. Something to how um, she might have hired somebody to do it because she might have been uh, romantically... Well, there's we'll, we'll get into that. Didn't we'll Molly into... Hatchet like have something to do with like name themselves after the I know I'm not familiar with Molly something. Hatchet I know the band I couldn't tell you but um, right, we'll get into some of the theories um, but yeah I think two, two people minutes. died I, I believe her mom and her dad well yeah oh, essentially yes so um, Lizzie Andrew Borden she became infamous you know this happened almost 124 years ago and people still talk about it today um you know, she's right up there with you know, Jack the Ripper, other you know infamous, famous serial killers that are still talked about today, um, and no one's really sure why. Why her legend endures all this time later? Why there's a bed and breakfast uh, that does great business um, in her former home? Um, no one, no one's really sure why this legend persists so strongly. But you know, Lizzie Andrew was her middle name, Lizzie Andrew Borden. Um, became infamous for killing her father and stepmother on thir- Thursday. Oh, was it stepmother? Stepmother, Abby, okay. yeah. Um, on Thursday, August 4th, 1892. Her father's name was Andrew Jackson Borden. As I said, her stepmother was Abby. Well, you know, the An- Andrew Jackson Indian Removal Act, etc. No, uh. Right, yeah. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> now, um, the stepmother, the, both of them were killed with an axe or hatchet type instrument. Stepmother was whacked 20 times in total. 19 wounds to the head, one wound to the middle of the back, and her father was dealt roughly 11 blows. Um, Lizzie, you know, after investigators, we'll we'll get into the story with the tour guides and all, but after the investigation, um, Lizzie was the prime suspect. She was brought to court and was acquitted of all all charges. She was let go. Um, And then she moved uh, to another home in Fall River and lived out her life. But um, there's many theories why Lizzie Borden may have killed her parents in such a heinous way. Um, One theory, as Joe Erie kind of alluded to, was there was some uh, forbidden love going on in the house between Lizzie Lizzie and her uh, housemate, Maggie. Um, Some say it was over money. Lizzie's father, Andrew was a multi, multi-billionaire in his time. Um, so some say it was over money. Others say it was uh, over jealousy, um, possibly because of continued emotional, physical, sexual abuse uh, Lizzie may have suffered at the hands of her father uh, that the stepmother was aware of. Or maybe it's none of them and, and it was somebody, somebody else entirely. There was... Uh, some uh, other family members coming around 
essentially asking for money, you know, very near the time of the murders. It's a whole convoluted um, story. And uh, the fact that it remains unsolved to this day is even more intriguing. Um, Now, when Lizzie went to trial, when all this was going on in 1892, the trial could be likened to the O.J. Simpson trial of our generation. It was, you know, countrywide news. It, it, as the court case progressed every day, you know, um, Lizzie would be in the headlines, front page of, of newspapers all across the country. People followed it with fervor. You know, they wanted to know what, what happened. Why were these people murdered so viciously? And mind you, we're coming off four years uh, since the Jack the Ripper murder, Jack the Ripper murder. So... Um, Jack the Ripper was fresh in people's minds. Um, that captivated the world. And here in our own backyard in the United States, we had a female who uh, committed heinous crimes. And they never figured out who Jack the Ripper was, did they? No, they never did. Yeah, but, like, it just stopped all of, of a sudden? It did. Yep. Yep. Lots I, of I, I did we, see a documentary. Covered, they think they might have, but they're not 100% Yeah, we sure. covered Jack the Ripper on a, on a past episode. Um but, you know, the world was just getting off of those murders. Um, and then four years later, after Jack the Ripper stopped killing, um, Lizzie Borden uh, incident took place. So, um, you know, we're going to go to the house. We're going we're to stay in the room. We're going to go into the room where the, where the father, Andrew, was murdered. Hit with an axe 11 times. We're going to go into the room where stepmother, Abby, was murdered. Hit with an axe 20 times. Uh, we're going to walk those halls. We're going to, you know, touch, touch whatever we can, try to feel some of that energy and see what happens. Um, I know I, I, I've always been intrigued with this case. I've read quite a bit about it. I have my own theories, but uh, I can't wait to see what this house is all about, what these tour guides have to say. Um, what are you guys hoping to get out of this? Um, well, I'd like, to, I'd like to, to feel something, like really haven't felt much thus far on this trip. Um, so I'd like to be able to feel that the place is haunted, and I'd like to hear uh, some stories from the people that work there about things they might have experienced in the paranormal realm. History is always neat, but I like obviously like to hear confirmation of paranormal happenings and such. Yeah, me too. How about you, Joe? I don't know. I kind of just actually want to just go in the house and actually be there, you know, be actually where it took place. That's, that's how I feel, too. Look around, you know. I mean, hopefully try to get a get a vibe or a feel. Yeah, and just so listeners are aware, you know, I always like to try to give the address of, of some of these businesses. As I said, um, the, 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 the Borden home is now a bed and breakfast uh, that can be rented out to groups for 1500 bucks uh, a night or not the entire house. They also have what was... Uh, 20, 20 guests uh, max capacity with individual rooms that could be rented out and so forth. So, um, you know, the Borden Bed and Breakfast is at 232nd 2nd Street, Fall River, Massachusetts. So definitely give them a look-see, look them up, read a little bit about Lizzie if you haven't heard of her. Uh, it's an intriguing, fascinating, gruesome case. Uh, something that's just right up our alley uh, here at Chicago's own Supernatural Current Studies. So I just want to give a quick uh, intro our hotel is, it was actually really close to the Lizzie Borden property, so we're almost ready to pull into the bed and breakfast driveway and uh, get this show started. So, guys, do you have any final words? Uh, that was kind of one of our shortest intros, I think. But yeah, no, just excited. Just want to go in. Yeah, check it out. Cool. All right. Well, we will continue um, with hopefully interviews from some tour guides. Stay tuned. Listeners, as promised, here we are, uh, Jason Knight, Joe Erie, and Dave Black reporting from, live from, the Lizzie Borden House in Fall River, Massachusetts. Um, we just got done taking a tour with our tour guide here, Rick, who is 
kind enough to allow us personal time after the tour to be in the house reporting from inside the house from the room, the couch, matter of fact, where uh, Mr. Borden was murdered, was found murdered. Um, so we're going to ask him some questions, maybe some off the record sort of stuff. Um, no problem. <laughs> so uh, I thank you, first of all, for the opportunity. My pleasure. The listeners, this is also going to be uh, on YouTube, Chicago's own Supernatural Current Studies on YouTube. And once again, uh, Jason Knight reporting for the SOS-Radio podcast. So let's just, let's just jump right into it. Right. Um, I would like to know a little bit about your, yourself, Rick. Uh, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for the last four years. My wife started working here in 2008, so she's been here longer than me. And uh, she got me into it, really. Uh, my very first experience at the house was uh, I was a non-believer to be honest with you and uh, she'd been working for three years and she told me stories about the house and I said what are you kidding me it's got a, a reputation of being haunted of course you're getting every little no- noise you hear you're gonna think it's paranormal it's sure. probably nothing at all it's probably more yourself than anything else and she said well you don't know come spend the night with me so we spent the night and she brought a bunch of equipment from a friend of hers that does research and stuff and she gave me a digital temperature gauge and she, she says, just let me know if there's any fluctuation in any of the temperatures. We've gone through the entire house, trying to get EVPs, all kinds of stuff, nothing. Three o'clock in the morning, we're sitting in this room here. I'm sitting in a chair, she's sitting in the other chair, it's right next to the radiator, and it's February now, so the heat's on in the house. Right. Base temperature in the entire house was 72 degrees. So she says, well, you know, nothing happening, we might as well go to bed, get some sleep out of this anyway. I says, well, it's okay. But I knew she was disappointed a little bit. I said, listen, I'll prove to you there's nothing happening here. Like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I stand up, and I, I get the temperature gauge, and I says, listen, I don't believe there are any spirits in the house. If there's at least one spirit in the house, then prove it to me. Make the temperature drop 10 degrees. And as soon as I said that, the temperature starts going down. Every second, it was going down one degree. Wow. And I was, yeah, that's what I was saying. I said, this can't what be happening. What were you thinking at that point? This can't be happening. <laughs> this isn't real. I said, oh, my God, this, this can't be right. I showed my wife, I said, look at it, it's going down. She says, see, see, you told you so. I says, well, well, I don't understand this. And, and I look back, and it's already down 60 degrees. It went down from 72 to 60 in 12 seconds. And wow. I only asked for 10 degrees, so my mind's racing now. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this thing's not going to stop. <laughs> so I says, thank you very much. Right back up to 72. No cold air in the house. Between me and the radiator, there was a, <clears throat> like a column of cold air that had developed. Right. And that just dissipated. And I, just, I was just in shock. Who do you think that was? What do you think that was? I don't know. I don't want to know, <laughs> but I'll tell you, I know there are two spirits in the house for sure, and that's Andrew and Abby. And, uh, the murdered, of course. The, the ones that were murdered, yeah, and that's probably the why, because of the way they were murdered, you know? Sure. So, but uh, there are some strange things that go on in the house every periodically. Usually, to be honest with you, it happens after a paranormal group has been in the house, and they've stirred up things. Of course. And usually we're left with the residual afterwards, like lights going on and off by themselves, and things being moved around, stuff of that nature. So it's... Very strange house, uh, but I've gotten to the, to the point where I'm comfortable here because we're just sharing space with them, right. you know, and, and it's fine. The only thing I don't like is being touched, and I was touched on the third floor, one, up in the, one, attic, in the attic area, in Bridget Sullivan's room. Bridget Sullivan, correct. Yeah, I have to make a comment about her picture because she had a man to look about her in the picture, and uh, I guess whoever was there didn't care for it, and they put my, their hand right on my back and they pushed me. In and the I room, can, I can outside feel the that room? Right in the room. In the room. And I'm up against the bed. I'm giving a tour at night, and there are people there, you know, and, and I can feel the hand, and it just pushed me. And I didn't want to startle the guests, but I kept it to myself, but I said, oh, my God. So I turned around, and I said, listen, folks, she's much more attractive than what she appears to be. And you said that today. Yeah, I, remember, yeah, I, I, said, yeah, I always say that now. Yeah, I always say mm-hmm. that. Because after the tour, I went up there, and I spoke to her picture, because I'm not sure if it was her or whatever, or whoever it was, but I said, listen, I only did that for entertainment value. You know, I, mm-hmm. I really respect you, and I, you know, you know yourself. This is a terrible picture of you, mm-hmm. so I will make sure from now on I'll always say that you are much more attractive than you appear in this picture. And, and you that's did. what I, I've yeah, been true to my word today. ever since. Yeah. So. Interesting. How about I like my job? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how much time would you say you spend here in, uh, in a week? Well, this past week I've been here every single day. Usually it's only like three or four days. I'll, I'll do tours during the week, and it's usually. Just a few hours every week, but at night I, when we do give night tours, I'm um, usually here from like three thirty till almost eleven o'clock at night. Wow! And then once I leave, the guests pretty much have the run of the house for themselves. One of the owners stays. There's a little place above the barn in the back where she's, they stay when they're overnight guests here. So, but we try to give them that unique experience of, of having the house to themselves. Yeah, I can't imagine how that so, would be. Wow. You know, we have to put a sign up, and I don't know if you noticed the sign in the gift shop. We have a sign in the gift shop. No. 
No refund for early departures. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. Have you <laughs> ever? We've had people leave. Yeah. So yeah. So the, so you've had two experiences here over the past four years. Correct. What about people coming through here? What are you hearing from guests? Oh, uh, we have a journal that we leave in the in the front hallway. Oh, we're gonna have to make sure. It's anyway, like that, that journal we have people uh, sign it and uh, and actually uh, put their experiences down, everything anything they have to say. And we have every journal from the very first day we opened on August the 4th, 1996. As right. the bed and breakfast. Yeah. In the bookcase, we have all the journals from the book and underneath there from all the different uh, years. And uh, <coughs> some pretty interesting experiences some people have had over the years. Most, to be honest with you, most times it's pretty quiet. Uh, but, you know, you get those occasional uh, days when uh, things go crazy. So could you think of one example uh, of, of a guest experience? Well, we had a... Um, we have an old Ouija board here in the house. I see. Is that an original? That's an original one. Uh, yeah. William Fold is an inventor and manufacturer. On the back it says it right there. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but William Fold um, um, patented the Ouija board. Correct. Yeah. In 1892, the same year the murder took place here in the house. Oh, wow. So it's kind of ironic that this board is in the house here. And it okay, actually, about five years ago, it went missing from the house for about three weeks, and they had to assume that maybe one of the old guests took it, you know? Wow. But they got it back in a FedEx box without a return address, and there was a note inside that said, please make it stop. Now, whether that's true or not, or is somebody pranking us, yeah, I don't know. You just gave me the goose. But yeah, I'll tell you, there's some strange things that go on here at the house, so it's a, it's a great adventure. Wow. See, when you when you talk about it, or, you know, just, just speak in general about it, or if there's people that have, you know, they can feel it, it knows. You know, and it, well, I'm sure. Some, yeah, I'm sure. I, we've done we've done sessions, and Ouija board sessions. No, I don't touch the Ouija board. No, but the, we've Good done uh, like different sessions of uh, uh, EVP sessions and stuff of that nature. You know, and we've asked Andrew. You know, you know about the tours. Whether he likes the tours. He said that he likes my tours. So I don't know why. No kidding. I think because I talk. I, I kind of I, I don't talk bad about the man. I really kind of. Uh, Especially with his business, he was such a good businessman. I mean, yeah. he, 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 rich, rich. no matter what kind of guy he was, he was a smart businessman, and he did his job really well. And his peers actually uh, viewed him as a, a tough guy, but fair. He was fair in all of his dealings. So he had a good reputation as far as some of his business associates, but not all of them. Wow, so. incredible. Um, well, let's talk about Lizzie. Guilty? Not guilty? It's, kind of just going yeah, straight for I, it there. You know, What's your? Per, I mean, when, sh- at the very beginning, I thought she was pretty much guilty, but when you start looking at the different aspects of this case, and there are so many different facets to this case, on the surface you would say oh, she had to have done it, but when you look at all the different things and you wonder, maybe she didn't, you know, and that's the mystery of it. I mean, I personally think it was either her, Emma. Or sister. even John Morse, but it had to be someone who really, really, really hated Abby because the way she was murdered, that's, that's actually in 19 excessive, hits, that's excessive. Insane. It could have been just a crazy person, too. I mean, could have been. Uh, you know, there is a theory also about an illegitimate son, William Borden. Uh, there was nothing to indicate that he was an illegitimate son, but he, uh, Andrew did have a nephew named uh, William Borden, and he uh, he was uh, a mental patient. And some of the strange things, uh, Arnold Brown wrote a book about his whole theory. That's his whole theory that was the illegitimate son, William Borden, that committed the murders. And it's interesting because his, his theory, he talks about William Borden trying to extort $5,000 from Andrew. And two weeks before the murders, the girls sold that the house, house for $5,000 $5, back to their father. So you wonder, wow. has there come some kind of connection yeah, there? That. That's what I mean. When you start looking at all different aspects I of things, yeah. you really start wondering, you know, maybe something else happened here, you know? And that's the intriguing thing about this. I mean, it's an unsolved mystery. You get all kinds of theories. I wonder uh, also when you said upstairs about the the maid, what what she was saying on her deathbed, and then she came out of it, and she always kept that secret. You know, I have an interesting question for you um, about the maid. Uh, I actually just learned this a little bit ago, but um, supposedly there was a rumor that. Lizzie might have been a lesbian in a relationship Romantically with, involved with the, maid. the maid, and that might have had something to do with the animosity with the family. And the you family. want to read a good book? What's that? You want to read a good book? Sure. Yeah. Read a book called Lizzie by Evan Hunter. Lizzie by Evan Hunter. And half of it is uh, fiction, and half of it is all fact. The, the fact portion of the book is the trial in New Bedford. The fiction part of it, uh, part of it is uh, his theory about that trip to Europe that she took two years before the murders. Mm-hmm. His belief is that she was introduced to a different style of lifestyle in Europe, 
And his whole theory, that the same, very same theory, she came back here and she met a woman out there who told her, you know, if you do have any kind of relationship, never have a relationship with any of your servants. Wow. And she came back. In the, in the book, she comes back and she does have a relationship with, with Bridget Sullivan. But again, we don't know if that's fact or fiction, right? We don't know if that's fact or Right, exactly. Just, in, in, exactly. We don't know what kind of lifestyle they had anyway. We don't know if, what their preference, what sexual preference was, to be honest with you. Right. So we just don't know. But, uh, another thing I thought that was really interesting, I didn't realize, you mentioned on the tour that Jack the Ripper and the Borden four murders years. were just four years apart, Borden being four Correct. years after right. the last Jack the Ripper murder. Correct. Um, so, it, and when you think about the history of this type of, type of subject, two people pop into your mind, Jack the Ripper, Lizzie Borden. Mm-hmm. And, they, yeah. look, and, and you said, What a wonderful couple they would have made. <laughs> right? Oh, um, imagine the kids. I, I have a question. Um, we know that she liked to read, right? So she was right. literate, yeah. which wasn't always the case back then. Um, did she have any journals or diaries or anything like that that's documented? There are letters and things that uh, she wrote. Uh, the Historical Society had a lot of that information, uh, and they were a good source of information. They, they, uh, the Historical Society has a book that they uh, came out with called Parallel Lives, which talks about Lizzie Borden and the city of Fargo and all that, and it's good, very insightful, and they have a lot of letters and things that she wrote over the years. But to me, actually, there's nothing to indicate in any of her letters or any of her writings there was any of, that there was any abuse going on or there was anything that else. Was another thing, right? Well, I'm, it would be I'm, very difficult to, to... I'm keep going back to the, the, the sexual orientation thing, but, you know, you'd think even, uh, you know, as a teenage girl, she would have, you know, talk about crushes or a boy she liked well, or something was, <clears> to that effect. They do have letters from uh, a girl who uh, she went to school with who uh, kind of indicate that she was kind of odd. But that was about it. I mean, there was nothing right. else. <laughs> like maybe asexual that. almost? Like, Who knows? We don't you know. know. I, I yeah, know. I mean, that, that's I've the known. feeling I got, that there was something going on with, uh, I mean, her possibly possibly being a lesbian. And, uh, I mean, especially at that yeah. time with the parents. And maybe they found out there could have been something in the house. You know, Well, or, there are always rumors, you know, yeah. that at, after the, the trial and all that, when they moved to Maplecroft, that uh, the rumors were flying that after she, Emma she had left, see. that she was mm-hmm. having an affair with uh, Nancy O'Neill. Uh, but there's nothing to indicate any of that. That's yeah, a problem. Right. I mean, there are all rumors yeah. and innuendos, but there's no and especially proof back of then, anything. Uh, yeah, this that's what makes such. it even more intriguing. This is yeah, one of so the big problems we run into overall in in discovering haunting haunted locations, or yeah. or I guess investigating places that are are well known or rumored to be haunted. Is a lot of times like this stuff just gets so blown out of proportion, and when we show up, it's like. You know, yeah. there's not a whole lot going on, really. I know. <laughs> Guys, I, I wish I could continue this, but i got another tour to no. give, so okay. I'm going to have to cut shot. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. But I appreciate you doing this, and then, uh, you know, anything to do about Lizzie uh, getting the word out, uh, people should know it's a fascinating house. You should come here, visit the house, Absolutely. at least take a tour, and to be in the house where all this happened, when you read about it and you, you, you study it a little bit and then you're actually in the house where all this happened, you have to wonder, how can no one hear anything that's going on in this house? Right. Everything mm-hmm. is so in such close proximity. It's, and it's things an creak and move. Yeah. And, and it's an old house. Yeah. Right. And, and right. another thing I wasn't expecting, too, is those photos. Because that's, I mean, that's at the beginning of the, you know, the Jack the Ripper was one of the first cases, right? Yeah. Or, right, it was the first, I think, that well, actually crime documented scene. crime scene crime photos. photos and, yeah. and that was four years Busy prior. Was the yeah. second. So that's... I, I didn't yeah, that's the same thing we share with them. We're the second one, uh, uh, second mm-hmm. trial in the in, in the world to uh, use crime scene photos in court. So yeah. that's kind of interesting too. One, it was a pleasure. Oh, say one final question. Sure thing. If Lizzie were here today, what do you think she would say, or the Bordens in general, about the um, phenomenon, about how so many people visit their house? I think their- Lizzie would love the notoriety. She'd love it. She'd just you know take it all in. She probably is right now. I mean, she probably is taking all these things. I hope things. she is. And Andrew and Abby, they may not be so uh, uh, pleased about it, but uh, but they're still here, and I think they still own the house. They think they do anyway, and uh, they're part of us, so here they are. Excellent. Well, yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Would it be okay if we looked at those journals for a few minutes? Uh, uh, Frank, I'm sure they're going to be standing up pretty soon. Yeah, and I have to go all right. take my camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look, mm-hmm. look through these journals and take pictures of pages that have anything cool on them. There was one story in there. But about, he said, well, okay. if you guys are walking around anyway, um, there was one story in there about uh, people that stayed here heard little kids giggling at them. Okay, good. Okay, well, here's so here we go, listeners. We just had an excellent... Dave, I want to get a pic of that Ouija board. Pictures. I got my camera. I want to get a picture of that Ouija board. Move your back. This is the 
the Ouija board they were talking about right there um, that was stolen and promptly returned with a note that said, please make it stop. We are in the parlor room where uh, Mr. Borden was murdered. This isn't the exact couch, but is the same type of couch. This is the parlor. Listeners on podcasts, go to Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies on YouTube for full footage of the Borden house. Walking into the main entry. Here we are in the front room. Borden house. Lots of antiques. Many of the antiques are original to the Borden house. It's important to note none of the furniture, uh, most of the furniture is not original. Uh, The Borden sisters, uh, Lizzie and Emma, took, stripped the house of most all furniture, but it has been done up to uh, look like exact replica of how the house looked um, at the times of the murders. I'm going to come into the dining room. Into the dining room. No, like I said. Borden, uh, one of the, I, th- I believe the father was actually laid out um, on a table in this room, not this table, but on a table in this room. So here is a look. Dining room. We have to make it quick. Oh, hello. We have to make this quick because there is another tour going on. Podcast listeners, I mean, definitely check out the video because this house is just so cool. Going upstairs. Approximately 7th or 8th stair leading up. This is the angle at which the stepmother was seen directly under that bed there. So from this vantage point, investigators saw the body of um, Lizzie's stepmother laying directly under that bed from this vantage point. As we go up, Joe, what was, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. What was the stepmother's name? I got my notes right here. This is she was found right here, face down. You want to reenact for us, Joe? So this is where. Go ahead, get down. This is where she was found. Listeners, I'm pulling out my notes. Yeah, I feel like so much is going on. There's actually a picture right here too. I'll get there. The father, obviously Andrew Jackson Borden and um, stepmother Abby. So this is exactly where Abby was found with 19 axe blows to her head. Right to her spot. back, right? To the back of her head and one in the middle of the back. And as Joel Erie mentioned, here are crime scene photos. In the exact position she was laying. There's another one. What's interesting in this one is you could actually see the police camera right there, uh, actually taking shots of the crime scene. And uh, there's one sport right there with 18 bulls to the head by now. Moving on. So this is where Abby was found, the stepmother. We are already in the parlor where Andrew Gordon was found. Bathroom that bed and breakfast guests have access to. Now we're coming into um, this is Lizzie's room. room. This is her bedroom. I'm just gonna let that I'm just gonna let that sink in. This is where Lizzie Borden slept. Yeah. Some of the books that she actually Touched red are in this bookcase there in cellophane. One of them is still in print. You can find on Amazon called When Ghost Meets Ghost. So those are actually books that she touched, she read. This awesome Lizzie Borden Living Dead doll right there. 
But right up above the right shoulder of the Living Dead doll, you see LAB. Those are Lizzie's handwritten initials. She wrote that with her own handwriting, of course. That sounded stupid to say, but yes, it is her handwriting. Off to the side. This is Emma's room, correct? So Lizzie and Emma, actually, to get into Emma's room, to get into her room, Emma would have to actually come in through the doorway here, walk through Lizzie's room. Hey, Lizzie. Hi, Emma. Kill anybody today? No. And here is Emma's room. Much like it was at the time of the Borden murders. Sorry, Joe. A picture of the dress of the time. It's incredible. It's it's great. You know the the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast um, is available to rent. Obviously, you could rent the entire house for a night for fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so that's something we're going to look at doing. Uh, but yeah, it could fit up to 20 people in this house. Last night, um, it was actually full to capacity. We couldn't get in. This is Andrew and Abby's room. The bed back in the day was actually um, blocking the window, so the room is a little bit backwards. But uh, otherwise, it's much the same. Original cast iron heater. I had an idea, too, of why they might have put it there. I mean, they said probably to watch the door, but also block out the sun. Block out the sun, yeah. Now, it's interesting to note, there is a very famous photograph that was taken by a, a tour member here at the Borden House of this exact window from the outside down in the parking lot, um, which shows clearly a woman's face. I mean, with head cover, like a bonnet, almost um, possibly hair. Like we're seeing here, could be hair, could be bonnet, but uh, it's pretty distinct. It's pretty incredible uh, photo. Um, so that was taken from that window. This room here, as I remember, was originally uh, an office for Andrew and a dressing room for Abby. Uh, now it's, of course, been turned into a bedroom for bed and breakfast guests. Very nice, very quaint, very historic. Listeners, if you ever find yourself in Fall River, Massachusetts, definitely come here and stay at the Borden House. Uh, where's the attic stairs? I don't remember where they... Oh, here we go. A lot of people in those books are reporting the same type of activity. All right, we'll talk about that in a moment. Flickering lights. Okay, make sure you shut the door. Here we are. We're going upstairs to the maid's, the maid's room. room. All right. Maggie. This is Maggie's room. This is the room where Rick... The tour guide said he was actually shoved yeah, in the back of the guy. chest. This is the picture of the maid? In, the ba in his back, not his chest, from his back. And that is the picture of Maggie the maid. And he had made a joke how she looked manly and then suddenly felt a hard shove uh, on his back. So this is Maggie the maid's room. Was she a suspect? Did she do it? No one really knows. course in the back here we have guest bedrooms these were not talked about on the tour so apparently not significant to the crime but uh, just other rooms in the Borden house that can be rented out hey Dave some of the guest books were written uh, that guests were hearing children laughing and playing at night and there just happens to be a Toy chest here with some creepy toys. Is that a Dracula man? It sure is. A little toy Dracula man. So this is the upstairs. I'm gonna head back. Come on, guys. I'm gonna head back downstairs. 
Dave, come on. Where is he? I don't want him thinking where. Oh. Headed back downstairs. They were gracious enough to let us do this, even while tours are going on. So I don't want to seem suspicious that we're separated or something. Headed just quickly down into the basement. There we go. Oh, actually, this is the first floor. This is the kitchen. We're actually not allowed to go down into the basement, but I'm just going to give you a look at the original foundation of the house. There you go. So I'm going to respect their wishes and not go down. Well, yeah, I should respect their wishes. The kitchen. I mean, check out this stove. This stove is incredible. That guy's back out. I'm going to... Just a huge old Glenwood cast iron stove that's still in use. Um, starting the tour, so let's go. Okay. Um, so that is the Borden. That is the Borden house. Um, tour is about to come in, and I'll just. come out. Just how do we get out? I don't remember how we get out. Just gonna keep it running. We're going to keep it running. Okay, let's go. Dave, let me get down. Joe, let me just peek the camera. We're going to go in the basement. This is what the listeners would say to do. So, just a quick peek. No. Someone's down here. Okay, we did it. So, that's the basement, listeners. A lot of uh, housekeeping going on down there. Excuse me, Dave. Original doors. Oh, original glass knobs. Hi, sorry, we just really quick. Where are you? Original glass knobs. Hi. Hi. What's We're recording on? for the SOS Dash Radio podcast. Oh. We just interviewed Rick, and Rick let us uh, graciously walk through the house. Did he now? Okay. He that's sure fine. did. If Rick says so, that's fine with me. We're gonna yeah, promote you to thousands of listeners. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks. We'll see you later. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Let's head Enjoy. out. That was John Stewart. <laughs> Rick, we're just about to we're heading out. Okay. No, yeah, I do. Those cuts. Sneaking behind you. Oh, I have to write them. Excuse me. No, you're good. We're leaving. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. Give me the information on the website on that to Sue. Okay, cool. To Sue. Excellent. Oh, Sue. Gotcha. Too right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So we are actually recording um, for the SOS Dash Radio podcast. We're a paranormal podcast out of Chicago. Um, we drove 1,100 miles to come and see this and report to our listeners. And uh, we took the tour. And Rick was great. And I asked him if we could interview him post tour, and he he allowed us to. And then I asked if we could walk through the house. You know, with the tour, it was packed. Um, mm. So it was kind of hard to get photos and things for our website. So I asked him if I could video record through the house, and he said, as long as we're respectful, which of course we are, we could be allowed to do so. Yeah, so we cool. just did that. Oh, you did it? You finished yeah, it? Yeah. We were oh, just heading yeah. out the door. Actually, they said they saw a tour coming in, so we are going to stand off to the side and let them come in, and we were going to sneak out. Did you uh, have any stories or anything? Anything you want to oh, share I with our podcast? experiences in this you house. Mind sharing something really quick? Could I ask your name, please? Sue Vickery. Sue Vickery. And how long have you worked here? Oh, oh, thank you for the time. years. For years? Yeah. Um, Since Liam bought the place, yeah, I don't know. Well, that was like 1990. Yeah, it was in the 90s, so. Eight or something like that. Yeah, like 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. What yeah. was it before a bed, and, a bed and breakfast? It was a private family home. The McGinn family owned the house. Oh, wow. Yeah, for like 40, 50 years. No kidding. Yeah. Okay, so big question. You're here all the time doing tours. What have you experienced? Oh, I get touched all the time. I get talked to in my ear. I get made to feel ill in a room, and if I just walk out, I feel better. Any particular rooms that that Dying happens room? to you in? Uh, dining room, not so much. More that's what I was is that where you were feeling it? Was, I was reading the, the sitting room and uh, where Abby was killed in that room, I'm constantly being touched. So in Abby's room, listeners, we took a walk up there and Joe. Where she was killed, not her yeah. room. But actually, where she was killed. Was oh, got it. Also, really, I've been pinched in that room. I plugged in my cell phone once to charge it. Lock, shut both doors. I came downstairs. I was talking to the guest, and I said, "Ah, about 20 minutes later, must be charged." I ran back upstairs. Hey, my cell phone was on the floor over here. The charger was on the floor over there. She didn't like uh, using her energy. No. <laughs> I got a couple of pictures because I investigate the house all the time myself. Oh, wow. 
Uh, we'll leave our, our uh, website information these, for you. I actually gave these pictures and author is already putting these in her book. For Excellent. Her, so I'll show you. Now, while you're pulling those up, what were some of the things that have been whis- whispered to you? Oh, get out, leave. Really? And I use dowsing rods a lot. I love them because they talk to me all the time with the dowsing rods. So I asked where the ghost was standing up in the attic. And um, there was two spirits there. One was Andrew and one was actually my grandmother there to, to protect me. So I said, oh, where are you standing? The rods pointed to it. So I uh, had my niece take a picture of me right at that moment with the say, digital. Those are, those are the two orbs right yeah. where they said they were standing. Oh, wow. Let me see if I could... Could I get that or into that camera? It's really hard to see, but I, I see it clear as day. And there you are. The second one was taken in the basement. Now have you been down there? The other ones are all black. Yeah, I caught this mist coming over the top oh, of the yeah. door. Oh, right look at with that. two orbs right in it. Now that's a good shot. Do yeah, you mind if we look around the basement? or? We were told that we, we just, just want to sneak. I poked my camera around right the corner and we came right back up when you saw us. Um, uh, really quick, I can just show you one thing down there. Oh, we would, that would be great. Oh, listeners, here we go. Okay. Here we go, down into the basement with a Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast tour guide. Excellent. Oh. Where, where'd you guys go? Okay. So obviously this is original foundation. <laughs> To the walls. house. This is the original wash basin, also. Oh, wow. Get a picture of that with your flash on it. So, there's a phenomenon in the back wall. But you Joe, get you got it? You get a picture? Yeah. Original wash basin. Wash basin. You put your flash on it, see what happens. Now, look at your picture. Look at the back wall. Mr. Borden's face. Mm-hmm. It shows up every time. I asked, like, oh my God. About it. Wait, wait, wait Joe, put that up to the GoPro. That's crazy. Get, put that picture up to the GoPro. All right, let me take another one. Let me just get it and see. No, I got a, a whole sentence recorded in the sitting room. And what I was it, in to the get sitting Andrew room? To talk, uh, this room where Andrew was killed. Okay. I was yes, trying to yeah. get him to talk for. Her. That's cool. It came out good. Hold on, Joe. I was trying to get him to talk for our overnight guests, so I had a uh, voice box going, and I said, Andrew, if you want me to leave, just tell me to leave. A whole sentence. Oh, you have it here oh, yes, with you? Right on oh, my man, jackpot! Absolutely. It's in my videos. All right, just give me a second to bring it up, all right? Because I know. Oh, the Ouija board. So you're using that Ouija board upstairs? Yeah, I don't like to use that. Did the, do, do you have the original pinchette for it too? Yeah, uh, yeah, but it actually split in half, so Tim's got to glue it. So you'll hear me trying to get him to talk, say, Andrew, if you want me to leave, just tell me to leave. That's coming in a second. Right now, I ask it. You say leave, we'll leave. You'll hear a whole sentence. Why would you leave? I'll tell you when. Right now. Why would you leave? That's Why weird. would you leave? I said, whoa, you're right. Why would I leave? I didn't do my toy yet. <laughs> yeah, I got crazy, crazy goosebumps. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I hear him talking all the time, but I don't always have the recorder going. Oh, that, Dude, is, that awesome. is great. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. This is, awesome. you're welcome, guys. Can't thank you enough. Yeah, Seriously. I mean, this is like the icing on the cake right now, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Why don't we go out this store? Yes, ma'am. Dave, let's go. Is that Dave? Dave. Joe, let's make sure not to forget to get a picture of your picture on the GoPro. Of yeah. that psychic impression Just of Andrew of Borden. Music. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. My mom's name is Sue, so oh, <laughs> I'm going to remember you. How would I get you our? How would I get you our um, info? Oh. Well, actually, I have a card. What am I talking? I'm sorry. I have a business card. And here we go. All right, listeners. I am pausing for now to continue on our adventure to Concord, Massachusetts. Sue, again, thank you very much. All right, Joe is here. He's showing us the picture um, that he took of the wash basin um, of Andrew Borden's, supposedly Andrew Borden's psychic impression, his face on the, the wall of that original wash basin. But I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, the we'll glare killing it. it, the killing it. It'll, it'll be on the website, yeah. I'll just look for Borden House uh, photos and video under photos and video on the SOS-radio podcast, but yeah, you can't. Anyway, I figured we'd try. All right, sign out. Yesterday in Old Fall River, Mr. Andrew Borden died, and he got his daughter Lizzie on a charge of homicide. Some folks say she didn't do it, and others say of course she did, but they all 
will agree, Miss Lizzie B was a problem kind of kid. Cause you can't shut your papa up in Massachusetts. Not even if this land is a surprise. A surprise! So you can't shut your papa up in Massachusetts. You know how neighbors love to criticize. <laughs> I got him on the sofa where he We're back. Home. We are off the Lizzie Borden tour. Um, we are done interviewing the two, two tour guides and uh, initial impressions, I was blown away. It was that uh, Rick and Sue, right? Rick and Sue, yes. Rick yeah. was the one that sat with us first that we were able to get on video as well for our YouTube um, viewers. Chicago's own Supernatural Current Studies is our YouTube channel. He was very um, authentically Massachusetts. Very Massachusetts. And then Sue, we just kind of bumped into when we were... And the listeners are here. This we were trying to sneak downstairs. Uh, they said don't go into the basement, but we kind of she, she caught us. She, she did. She caught us, and now we're going to get in trouble. But actually, she wound up being awesome. Um, yeah, wound, wound up showing us a couple extra things, which was pretty cool, including that EVP. I hope the Tascam was able to pick that up. Uh, we'll know once we get back to Chicago. That's a very high quality recording. It, well, well, that that's the spirit box where it spans all those. Uh, radio frequencies in a very rapid manner, very loud, very annoying. But that sentence came through clear as a bell. Um, we'll see how the Tascam picked it up. It was coming off of a cell phone, um, Sue's cell phone. The cell phone I've noticed could play havoc on the Tascam, so we'll have to review and see how that comes out. But you know, my first impression before I you know go home and decompress and chew everything, um, I was blown away to to stand in the room in the parlor room where um, Andrew Jackson Borden was was brutally slain and up in that bedroom on the second floor where Abby was slain. I just, I can't put it into words. And then they have the crime scene photos right next to the spots so you could see the body where it was laying on that fainting couch or you could see the body where it was laying next to that bed. I mean, it, that was awesome. It's just, <laughs> it, it's... It's something I like I've never experienced before. The most intense experience I had while I was there, while well, when we all went upstairs, everyone went into the bedroom um, where she was murdered, where Abby was murdered, and I kind of broke off from the group and started walking towards the back bedrooms because they were open. And I always like when there's people moving around in the place, I, like the energy goes away. It's not hanging around. So I was trying to see if I could feel where it is. So I walked into the bedroom that would have been um, Lizzie's bedroom. And then I walked, and I started getting a feeling vibe there. Then I walked into the back bedroom, which would have been Andrew and Abby's bedroom. That's where they got that photo, too. And I immediately yeah, I immediately started detecting a presence in there. And as I kind of walked up to the back wall, I saw a person in the bathroom... It was the housekeeper. It just scared yeah. the crap out of me. Flesh and blood. Because I had no idea she was there. And I looked, I kind of jumped a little and I looked at her and she kind of jumped and looked at me and I'm like, are you real? And she's like, yes, I'm real. And I'm like, okay. The unshakable and I just kind of like Mr. turned, turned around back. and walked out of the room. But I like when I, when I felt the feeling in the room, like, cause sometimes, Sometimes I'll, I'll get a vibe. I'm like, I'm feeling the presence of something. And then, like, somebody will come around the corner, like an actual human being yeah, or whatever. Real, real energy. It's like I can actually feel, like, when, a, when another, like, when I'm tuned in, I can feel another living being, you know, around. So that was uh, that was kind of an interesting the, thing. the animal instincts. Now, just a quick question. The energy you felt in Andrew and Abby's room, the parents' room, did you get a read on whether it was male or female, good or bad? Not, not really, negative? because okay. because I was immediately thrown off by the, the housekeeper. Damn team. it! So, um, but I, I honestly, we would need to get into that place at night to really get get the feel. I mean, it was cool to see all the history and everything, but I really didn't get to. Um, I felt a little bit in the basement when Sue took us down into the basement. Yeah, we'll I kind of I kind of broke off and wandered away there too. Um, and when I wandered out, off towards the back of the basement, I kind of felt it down there, too. Yeah. Um, because, basically, the, the, the thing is that during the daytime, you know, when, especially when people are milling about, the energy is going to go hide in, in a corner somewhere, you know? Which is a real strange trait to the energy because we believe, we feel that the energy needs 
other energy to kind of feed off of. Yeah, but I almost and charge feel, itself. I almost feel like when it when there's too much around, it's it's overwhelming for it. It's like when we go to groups and take photos, it's like I can't feel anything. Yeah, you know, it just there's too much people around it. It's almost it's scared. It hides, you know, like like like, like a snake or a fish, you know. And when when everyone's gone, it kind of comes out and creeps. And, yeah, it's like know. okay, coast is clear. Like now, I said, it's like a like a raccoon or a skunk in your neighborhood. You know they're everywhere, but you don't see them until it gets dark out. Nobody's around it. Yeah, good analogy. Uh, one thing I did want to touch on is what Joe Erie alluded to um, in that back bedroom, which would be uh, Andrew and Abby's bedroom, where Dave felt the energy momentarily. There was a photo that was captured by a tour patron however many years ago. Seven years ago, I think. Was it seven years ago? That was shown to us uh, right before the tour began. Our tour guide, Rick, showed us the picture. And uh, it's an old picture. It's kind of yellowed. It's been handled a thousand times. And it was from a tour patron that said, taking a picture of the Borden house from the back parking lot area. Um, And it shows, you know, all the back windows of the house. And in Andrew and Abby's window, right above uh, a, a window air conditioning unit, um, is a is a face that, to me, to most, looks like a female, with maybe you know uh, heavier set features in the face, and uh, also appeared to be wearing a bonnet, or her hair was done up to look almost like a bonnet. I don't know if that was a common style back in like those it was days. In a bun but almost. Yeah, like bonnet. Like a grandma. He, when, when he was showing us the photo, he actually showed a picture of her compared to the photo, and it looked, I mean, identical. Was, now, like her, her who, Joe? Huh? Her who? Uh, the semon. Of that Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, I just wanted to get it out there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, and, you know, hey, it could have been uh, condensation from the window air conditioning unit that, you know, uh, resembles something else, simulacra, right? Finding distinct patterns and it random shapes. Fake, it could have been a fake picture. It could have been Photoshop. Yeah. Like, or you know, or it could have been real. Yeah, something honestly, could have been caught there. For the the quality of that picture, I mean, it, it either was a spirit, otherwise it was Photoshop. But yeah, well, I mean, but yeah, all we're looking it at all it we're didn't look, look photoshopped at all to me. But all we're looking at is a print of a, of a photo that supposedly someone gave them seven years ago. All right, so, but I, I the fact is, it so exists. They you show say you... the same thing about us in our book. Right, the, right yeah. but you, you have no idea what... Listeners could say the same thing about ours. But the right. fact is, it exists. They show it before the tour to kind of set the mood. Then you enter the house and you go through the tour. Now, one thing I was kind of disappointed about, um, and don't get me wrong, I love the tour, I love the experience. I, I, I'm, I'm honored to say that I was able to check this off my bucket list, but um, none of the furniture, I had originally thought all the furniture was original to the house. Um, even There's the, a lot of uh, the back bedding and uh, Yeah, even the fainting thing. chair that uh, Andrew was murdered on, I thought was original, which I guess in retrospect was silly to think that, but uh, considering how heinous and bloody of a crime it was, but I thought, you know, a a lot of the other furniture was all authentic. It wasn't the the Borden sisters, you know, Lizzie and Emma, she had a sister named Emma, um, they took almost all of the furniture out of the house. One Uh, of my favorite pieces in there was that autopsy table. Well, not only the autopsy table, yeah, and the Ouija board was pretty cool, and Rick... You know, uh, Rick told that story about how the Ouija board was stolen and then returned with a note saying, make it stop. Um, I thought that was great, too. But, yeah, so I was a little disappointed about that. But they did say that all of the glass doorknobs on the downstairs doors are original to the construction of the home. So, you know, I made it a point to grab a couple of them and think, wow, Lizzie Borden actually touched the same thing I'm touching. Did you grab the red doorknob? I didn't. What about the foundation? Do you think the foundation's original? Absolutely. They said it was because I asked about it. Yeah, so original foundation. We were down there in the basement. Um, So, Joe, so we got Dave's impression. Joe, what was your overall impression of the tour and the house? Uh, Really cool. Uh, Great people. You know, great tour. I just, I didn't feel too much. There was too many people. Uh, my, the strongest feel was upstairs in the maid's room. Um, and I mean, okay, on a scale to one Maggie's to ten. Room. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it might have been I, d- I didn't get anything in that room because by the time it I walked in... three. I was one of the first I, ones but, in. Yeah, by the time I walked in there, there were 15 people. Yeah. There. It's, it's really hard to get readings around too many people. And especially at that, at that time of the day. 
Right. But overall, a positive I'm not experience. saying it doesn't happen at that time of the day, but... No, absolutely. I think, I think we get that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's talk about getting into the basement. Um, as I mentioned, we were kind of sneaking down there. We got busted by Sue, who is awesome. That's my mom's name, so I immediately liked her. Uh, and she was a little, like, leery, like, who are you guys? What are you up to? But once we explained ourselves, she was more than willing to sit and talk with us for a while. Um, she said, come on, I'll take you downstairs. I want to show you something uh, that not a lot of people get to see on the normal tours. Now, if you stay overnight, you pay for a room there. Um, our tour was maybe 45 minutes. If you pay for a night there, the tour is over two hours, so they see a lot of other stuff uh, that the normal tour patrons don't see. Guests see stuff that the you, you get normal patrons too, don't. Right? Yeah, yeah. So she brought us down into the basement, um, and she brought us to the original wash basin. Is that right, Dave? It was the yeah. wash basin. So yeah. It's recessed into the wall. Yeah, and she's, you know, Andrew Borden used to wash up here. You know, they used to wash their hands there and, and things like that. So kind of like we would treat a slop sink in our basements. You know, that's what they used they it for. probably wash their clothes and stuff there, too. Probably, yeah, it could be. Um, so she's like, come here, let me show you something. She told Joe, told us, Joe wound up doing it, she said, take a picture of the back wall of that wash basin. Now, this wash basin is, is funky, man. It's from the original, you know, built with the house. It's nasty. It's cobwebby. Probably spiders, and I wasn't going in there. So Joe went in there, and he, he, he took a picture of the back wall of this wash basin. And, and what happened, Joe? Well, she, she basically said that there's a, there's a face that just it, it just stuck. Like There's an image that always shows up in every picture because for some reason it's... I forgot like how a, she described she said, well, it. Well, she called it a psychic impression. A psychic impression. That's what it was. Of who? Uh, Andrew I, the, Borden. The father, right? Yeah, of yeah. Andrew Borden. Now, um, so Joe took the picture, and we'll, we'll get this picture. i got to get that picture from you, yeah. Joe. I took a couple pictures, too, with my camera. Oh, very good. And we'll put it up on the sos dash radio yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see it. And, you know, and it but... does look like there is a face back there. I mean, Again, the, the simulacrum. Exactly, but this is part of the um, part of the tour that very few people get to see. So, um, I thought that was pretty cool that she brought us down there. Uh, she let us listen to uh, a phenomenal EVP. Um, hopefully, we caught it. You guys will hear it uh, during a seance, I believe they were doing um, at the Borden House. And I'll let you listeners listen to that and make out what it says. I'm not going to put any thoughts into your mind. Uh, so listen to that EVP. So again, with Sue, very positive. With Rick, very positive experiences. Yeah, thank you again if you're listening. Yeah, guys, thank you. Um, well, we did give Sue our last business card, so she has the uh, all the info. And um, I don't know, thought it was great. Thought it was great. Bought a couple souvenirs, real nice. Even snagged some mint from the garden, so we have some some oh yeah some Lizzie Borden mint to grow at home. It's yeah. Strawberry. Lizzie Borden bread and bed and breakfast. We did take a few sprigs of mint, um, so now we will grow Lizzie Borden and strawberries. Mint. I don't know what you're talking about. So, any well, final thoughts? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a cool place. I'd love to see it at night. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Another thing I thought was really cool were the books in Lizzie Borden's room. The books that she actually read and touched. Oh, speaking. They had her handwriting in there. Speaking of which, I went through all the. Um, the logs from all the the, uh, the log books from from the people that had stayed there at the bread bed and breakfast, and there were dozens and dozens and dozens of stories of people recounting things that had happened to them while they were there. A lot of flickering lights, a lot of like f- feeling like somebody was touching them while they were sleeping. So I took pictures of all these accounts, um, you know, awesome. and and they're on my uh, on my camera. So oh, they're so they're awesome. on the picture. I yeah, yeah. Perfect. 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 I haven't had a chance. I just. Did a mass download. I haven't had a chance to go through all of them yet. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll get that up on the website too. Um, okay. Final thoughts. That's about it. I just, um, you know, if we, if we do go back, I do want to sleep, uh, spend the night. Yeah, we're gonna do. We'll do that next time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, this is uh, Chicago's own supernatural current studies. Signing off. Don't forget our website. We have a donate button if you'd like us to continue these awesome road trips reporting live from infamous locations and putting ourselves in harm way, either physically or spiritually, uh, just click that donate button. We appreciate uh, any support you're willing to give. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the SOS-Radio podcast. Be sure to rate us on iTunes and Google Play Music. Download our free mobile app by searching 
Supernatural Occurrence Studies on Google Play, Apple App Store, and Amazon App Store. Visit us online for ghostly photos that coincide with our podcasts, videos, and other exclusive content at sos-radio.com, chicagosos.com, and supernaturaloccurrencestudies.com. Follow us on Facebook at SOS-Radio. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chicago Ghosts. We're on YouTube at Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies. Follow Jason Knight on Google+. Remember, that's Knight, N-H-Y-T-E. Email us anytime at submissions at sos-radio.com. And call or text 872-529-0-SOS. That's Chicago area code 872-529-0767. And as always, kind listeners, keep your head up, eyes open, and question everything. You want to save your soul from hell, arriving on our range. Cowboy, change your ways.